So tell me, what does this look like to you? Does it look like I'm in a large room? Does it look like there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of people in the front of me that's watching me do this presentation? Well, no, it is not true. That is not that many people. And I'm simply in my home office studio, my home studio, and I'm delivering a presentation. I'm talking about something that's close to my heart and that may probably be close to your heart, but only time will tell as we move into this presentation. I am Victor Irving Jenkins from Crave the Spotlight Media Marketing, born in 1952. Why, you might ask, is it important when I was born? It's important when I was born because this is specifically addressed to the black folks in the audience. Now, it may be beneficial for people who are not black, but specifically, I want to talk to the black folks in the audience. You see, in 1952, that was the height of the Jim Crow era of our country. That was the height of the Jim Crow era of our country's history. And I can tell you, I personally have been places where there were signs saying colored only or white only. I remember going to the Rivers Theater in downtown Charleston, South Carolina when we paid our money at the booth like everybody else because you know money crosses all boundaries. We paid our money and then we walked outside and then we went upstairs in the balcony where the black folks were supposed to sit. I can recall living on King Street and being a boy looking out the window watching all the black people, the working men and women. Nobody was a doctor, nobody was a lawyer. Everyone was just a laborer, all black folks, marching down the road singing, We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Down in my heart, I do believe that we shall overcome someday. And we were indeed singing from the heart because we really, really wanted to overcome. You see, all the laws were slanted against us. Policemen just beat us because we were black. If we got in an argument with a person who wasn't black, we were automatically wrong. And you know, that was terrible. But it's not like that now. It's not like that at all. We have people like Bill Cosby, Oprah Winfrey, Michael Jordan, Barack Obama. We have black folks in the population that's doing just as well, or just as bad, as anyone else. So as far as I'm concerned, based on the fact that I was born in 1952, we have overcome. And the last bastion of conquering this left is in our own minds. You see, what has happened is many of us have got into the habit of being in a struggle. There are still black people half my age talking about the struggle and how people are racist and how it's terrible that people say bad things about them. And really and truly, the thing that's even stronger than that, the thing that's even more powerful than that, is what we think about ourselves. You know, there's some unpleasant truths that black people have been unwilling to admit for years and years and years, and I was unwilling to admit some of it myself. For instance, one truth that I was unwilling to admit is that I did not like being black. I just really didn't like being black growing up in 1952, 53, into the early 60s. And I didn't like it because it seemed to me that being black was the only reason that I wasn't happy. And in the early 60s and the early 70s, well, it was easy for somebody to make that mistake. It is not possible to make that mistake now. Barack Obama is the President of the United States. Oprah Winfrey is the richest woman in the world. Many black people are doing so many things. The fact that being black is going to stop you from doing something is just absolutely ludicrous. Just recently, some guy, I don't even remember the guy's name, he made some disparaging remarks about race. And due to social media, everybody knows what those remarks were. But what everybody doesn't know is that, so what? That's the way he thinks. That's the way he feels. Believe it or not, there are probably some people that still think that the earth is flat. People have all sorts of thinking in this world today, but it doesn't have to affect you. 
As far as the man who made the racist remarks is concerned, all that means is that he had a limited upbringing. All that means is that he's not that diverse in his experience. You don't want to waste your time getting angry at somebody that says something that seems as stupid as that, do you? And if someone genuinely believes that, how are you in your anger going to impact them to believe differently? How are they ever going to know how sweet, kind, and generous you are, despite that you are black, if you don't show them a kind and loving heart? Well, the answer is that they're not going to know. You have to rise above all this. You've got to be bigger than all this. What I'm telling you now has been on my heart for several years. I, I'm 60 years old now, 60 years old, and when I hear people 30, 40, 50 years old talking about the white man and sending a text on their $700 smartphone about how terrible it is that this white person said that about black people, it just hurts me to my heart. Because the reason that they're concerned that those things are being said is not because those things are true, but for some reason, Black folks think it means something when somebody white, somebody rich, somebody famous. Black folks think it means something that those people think ill of black folks. Are you kidding me? It means absolutely nothing. It only means something if you want it to mean something. The people that have built wealth in this country, the people that have leveraged the American experience to be getting the best out of their experience so they can sit in their multi-million dollar mansions and talk about black people or talk about any kind of people and then have those people all suddenly form an organization, form a group to march against what they said. Paula Dean ripped the shreds for what they think that she meant. You know, it's time off for that. As black people, we have to be at least as smart as every other people. We don't, have, we don't have a monopoly on being stupid, and we don't have a monopoly on being right, and there is nothing noble about feeling victimized because somebody that you don't know says something about a member of your race. You know, criminals who are in jail, who happen to be black, they don't have anything in common with me. They don't have anything in common with me. So when you disparage a black person who's a criminal, I don't care. You know, this whole idea of black people being victimized and being discriminated, it's just ran its course as far as I'm concerned. The affirmative action debate has run its course as far as I'm concerned. If you're going to waste your time being concerned or being worried or being hurt about those sort of things, you are never going to live the life that you were meant to live. And my biggest gripe is with the black Christians. Oh my goodness. The black Christians. Jesus Christ is Lord. If God is for you, who can be against you? Jesus Christ has overcome the world. We believe all these things. And we say all these things. And we read our Bible. And we walk in love. But don't you let anybody mention taking away affirmative action. Because if they took away affirmative action, it would turn the clock back. Now here's some, here's some reasons why you want to share this whole victimization thing. Here's some reasons why you want to share the discrimination culture. Number one. The number one reason is that your mind determines what you get in this world. Your mind is magnetized to receive those things that you think about most of the time. You can debate it, you can talk about it, but let's just act as though it's true. Let's say it is true that what you think about, you bring about. And if you are thinking that people are taking advantage of you because of your skin color, then you're going to bring that to you. The quantum theory dictates that the thing that you observe changes because you are observing it. So if you are observing racism, you are changing it. And what if the way that you are changing it is that you are bringing it to you? Some people tell me that President Obama is the most maligned president that we've ever had. Not true. Absolutely not true. They were complaining that they drew a caricature of him looking like a monkey and that he, they did that because he was black. Not true. When you're the president of the United States, you have an entire organization that's, de that's designed to ruin your day. You have an entire organization that does whatever it can, whatever it can imagine to do, to knock you off your game. And if you happen to be black, well, yeah, they're going to call you a nigger. If you happen to be fat, well, they're going to call you fat. If you happen to be unattractive, they're going to call you ugly, and it ain't going to make any difference to them. 
There are so many portions of the human condition that's just really, really independent of what your skin color is, it'll blow your mind. Yes, I get excited about this kind of thing. I get a little passionate about it. And the reason I'm so passionate about it is that I have been going in the wrong direction so much in my life by relying on what others said about me, by relying on what others thought about me. And I want you to get free from it too. I want you to eliminate your tendency to pay attention to what other people say about you, to what other people think about you. What other people think about you is absolutely none of your business. What do you think of yourself? What do I think of myself? I love myself and I refuse to allow my well-being, I refuse to allow my mood to rest on whether or not somebody cares for me. You know this video that you're looking at, this, this, this dissertation, uh, whatever you want to call it, I'm not even going to post it on social media. I'm simply going to place a title on it and I'm going to put it on YouTube and let the chips fall where they may. The social media climate that we live in today allows pretty much anybody to become famous overnight. I also believe in the theory of the resonating, right? Let's talk about a jerk or people that you call racist. If someone is a racist and you are not a racist, that's okay. Just don't let them in your space. But don't waste your time hating them. Don't waste your time disliking them. Don't waste your time with a strong emotional appeal in any direction because whenever, whenever something is, is, is felt deeply and strongly, it comes towards you. And I don't know why it works that way, but that's just the way it does. Everybody has a particular person that they think is a jerk. They call the person a jerk. I'm here to tell you that no one's really a jerk. They're only people that don't resonate with you. Because those people that you call jerks, People love them. Other people love them. Other people care for them. Other people buy them things. Other people love them. Other people have sex with them. And you're calling them a jerk. Well, they're not a jerk. <laughs> they just don't resonate with you. And that's perfectly okay because everyone is not going to resonate with you. Those people that prefer to be racist, they... Well, I guess in a sense, if you're going to allow the, how they feel about you to impact you, I guess they are resonating with you because you want something to be mad at, you want something to fear, so they give you something to fear. I propose that you eliminate that part because you don't need to respond to that part. You don't need to react to that part. You can react to that part if you want to. I find that the biggest races are black people. Black people, many black people, are just not willing to let it go. And I'm still talking about black Christians, because I'm a Christian. They're just not willing to let it go. It's hard to let it go. This idea about affirmative action and reparation, you know, racism is just one of several maladies that exist in the world. Hate, fear, bigotry, adultery, fornication. Murder, misery, all these things exist in the world and they're never going to go away. But they don't have to cross your path. All you have to do is quit looking for them. If you quit looking for them, they'll quit showing up. Racism will go away when people quit complaining about it. In fact, why don't you make a commitment not to complain about anything because it really doesn't help you to complain about anything. And finally, to do some justice with this horse that I'm on about racism. Yeah, racism. I read a book once. It was written from the third person from a little boy. And he was talking about the Ku Klux Klan, or the proper name, the Ku Klux Klan. And he was saying how as a boy they loved him. They cared for him. They taught him to shoot a rifle. And they taught him to love Jesus. They taught him to go to church on Sunday, give up offering, love everybody, the Ten Commandments. And they taught him that niggers were less than animals. Now, of course, he's going to believe that if he believed everything else they told him. He's just a kid. He can't decide what's true and what's not. Maybe when he's older he can, but it's going to be a momentous occasion when he decides Oh, wow. I guess niggers aren't worse than animals. Oh, I guess they aren't niggers either, are there? But it's going to take a lot for him to change. 
It's going to take a lot for him to be different from what he grew up as. And you, with your anger, and your being disgusting, and your being hurt, and your attacking, and your responding to his idiocy, it's not going to be the thing to change him. You're not going to change him. You're just simply going to force him to find more reasons or more excuses to continue believing what he believes. You're not going to do anything for yourself because all you're going to do is continue feeling badly. Continue feeling poorly. And you're going to carry that thing around with you and carry that thing around with you. And it's never going to go away. So what's the answer? You have to become a mature person and realize that just because you don't like it doesn't mean that it's wrong. And even if it's wrong, just because it's wrong doesn't mean that people are going to stop doing it. And even if people stop doing it, that doesn't mean that they're going to stop thinking it. And even if they stop thinking it, that doesn't mean that they're going to stop feeling it. So it's going to be up to you to take control over your own life. It's going to be up to you to take control over your own thoughts. Because what you think about determines how you feel. And how you feel determines what actions you take. And the actions that you take determine what you get out of your life. So if you want to get the most out of your life, you can't waste any time hating. You can't waste any time being in fear. You can't waste any time responding to the stupidity of other people. In fact, you can't waste your time identifying stupidity. You've just got to let it go over your head. Ask yourself the question, because this is the question that bears asking. When you find yourself thinking of something and feeling in a way that you don't really want to feel, ask yourself this. What is it that my thinking about this is doing for me to help me move further along in my life? What is it that I'm getting by being a bigot? What is it that I'm getting by responding to racist comments? What is it that I'm getting by being in fear? Ask yourself those questions. And you will find most probably that you're, you're really not getting anything. So if it's not doing anything for you, why not stop? Why not quit? Why not change? I have simply attempted to give you some different things to think about because I really am at the end of my rope with this whole racism thing. I pretty much had my fill of people who just get all twisted when somebody says something racist. By people who are upset when somebody reminds them that they're black. Hey, you know what? If you don't believe the stuff that they're saying, don't, don't let it bother you. Come on, man. Come on. If you're 30, 40, 50 years old, you don't even know what racism is. You don't know what it is for somebody to get beaten. And the dirty little secret that black people don't mention is this. If the majority of black people did not want to be slaves, there would not have been slaves. Now, now granted, we, we would have been all dead. I know we would have been all dead. And some of us did die. But if the majority of us didn't sit down, if the majority of us didn't go for the whole slavery experience, there would have been no slavery experience. Well, now that that experience is over, and you just have people thinking bad things about you, if the majority of us don't care what they think, I think that will go away too. Hey, give us some thought. You don't have to agree with everything I said, and some of you who don't agree with everything I said, just keep in mind, I'm black too. And just like you don't agree with the things that I said, and I'm black, there are many other things about you that's true, that's not true about me, even though we are both black. There was a time when all black people shared the same experience, and that experience was victimhood. But that time is now gone. We all don't share the same experience. The only thing that we share together now is our skin color. And some of us are so light complexioned that people don't even know we're black, so all of us don't even share the same skin color anymore. So let's make a commitment. Let's make an honest commitment to let this stuff go. You know, quit being people's pets. 
When they want to have a movie now, and they want somebody to have a real heartfelt experience, what do they do? They, they talk about black folks or how terrible it is what happened to us. Ah, pish posh. So I hope that this has reached you. Of all the hundreds and thousands and perhaps millions of people that's going to see this video, I'm only looking to reach a handful of you. Just a handful of you. And that handful that I want to reach is the ones that decide I am no longer going to be identified by the fact that I'm black. Oh, I'm black all right, and that's part of who I am, but I will no longer be pigeonholed into being what the majority of black people think that a black person is. Because before I'm anything, before I'm black, before I'm anything at all, I am a human being, and I'm a child of the Most High God. And on top of all that, I am Victor Irving Jenkins, the son of Elizabeth and John Theo Jenkins Sr. Whew! I'm glad I got that off my chest. Man, I've wanted to do that for so long. Who knows if I'll ever even publish the thing, but I really, really wanted to say it. Thank you for listening.